One is video transmission systems. You would typically only find them on higher budget film sets or live broadcast applications, and they're rarely accessible by consumers because typically these are really, really expensive. That's when I started to notice this brand by the name of Hollyland, who were actually releasing these class of products at relatively speaking, affordable price points. So I was actually invited by Hollyland to review these. These are the Mars 400s. They are their newest wireless HDMI transmission system. And in fact, I was actually sent out pre-production units. And as of filming this review right now, the official pricing has yet to be announced, so I don't know exactly how much these cost. But in case I find out sometime between filming this and publishing the review, the price is going to be up here somewhere or down in the description. Now this is actually an incredibly simple piece of gear to use. The HDMI video signal goes in the transmitter and comes out of the receiver. Simple as that. Looking at the body of the transmitter and the receiver, they've got an almost identical build. There's a nice big OLED display, three navigation buttons. On the side of the unit are the USB Type-C ports for firmware upgrades, and there's also the ventilation grill. There's the power switch down below, and on the bottom, there is a quarter inch thread. Flipping it to the other side, the receiver has two HDMI outs, and the transmitter has an HDMI in and also an output for HDMI pass-through. Both of them have 6 to 16 volt DC ins and removable antennas that can be angled, and they're powered by Sony MPF batteries. The units are made with a sturdy metal housing, and the front dimensions are only slightly bigger than a business card. So in the box, aside from the transmitter and the receiver, there's also a DC power supply, a USB Type-C to Type-A converter, a cold shoe to a quarter inch mounting adapter. They also pack in five antennas, which means you have one spare antenna just in case, and that means what's not included are the HDMI cables and also the batteries. Now, I would classify the Mars 400 as being targeted at the prosumer market segment, so it's sandwiched between consumer and professional, and here's why. This is an HDMI-only system, which means it doesn't cater for SDI inputs or outputs, which is almost a requirement at the professional level. But in the prosumer segment, HDMI is not necessarily a bad thing because most cameras in this range can't even output SDI. Plus, the Mars 400 can also transmit to up to two receivers with only one transmitter, which I personally think places it above the utility of a typical consumer, hence the reasoning that this is a prosumer product. But if you do happen to require SDI, there is actually an SDI version of this product, the Mars 400S. Now that model is priced slightly higher at $649, so if your workflow requires SDI connections, then the S version would be a no-brainer, but if you're certain that you'll be working only with HDMI, then you can save yourself a bit of cost by getting the standard HDMI version. But what really impressed me about this system is the range. Now on the box, it's written that this system can work up to 400 feet. But during my line of sight outdoor range test, I set up my camera and my transmitter at one end of this stadium, and then I walked all the way to the other end of the stadium, which is about 460 feet away, with the receiver and a recorder monitor, and I still got a rock solid signal even though I was operating about 60 feet beyond its advertised range. The indoor range is unsurprisingly reduced when you've got multiple walls blocking the signal, in my rather extreme test, it only started cutting out after I went down a floor and around the corner, so I'd say it still did a great job. Now it does take about half a minute for the transmitter and receiver to find each other and link up every time you power them on, but operation-wise, it's very much plug and play. You just turn them on, wait for a little bit, and you are set to go. The user interface is also incredibly simple. The OLED screen displays the channel, the video format, the signal strength and status for each receiver, and to enter the menu, you simply hold down the middle button, and that's where all your settings are. The Mars 400 operates in the 5 GHz frequency spectrum, and there are 13 channels for you to choose from. And one thing I really like about the Mars 400 is once you have them already paired up, as soon as you change the channel on either one end, it's going to automatically synchronize it on the other end, which means if I change the channel on my transmitter, my receiver is gonna automatically change its channel to match the channel of my transmitter as well, and I don't have to run around to dial it in on both ends. There's also a channel scanning feature, which shows you at a glance which channels are good to operate on, which is a very convenient and practical feature to have, especially for optimizing range and stability. The Mars 400 has three image modes. One of them prioritizes image quality, the other one prioritizes speed, and then there's an in-between one. But quite frankly, I personally couldn't notice any visible difference in image quality or performance when switching between those three modes. So I also tested out the delay of the system. So I started with a control by hooking up an HDMI monitor directly to my camera, and that itself introduced about four frames of delay at 24p, so we'll take that into account. 
Now adding the Mars 400 system between my camera and the monitor brings the overall delay up to about 7 frames, which means the system itself introduces a delay of about 3 frames, which I think is very much acceptable. The Mars 400 can transmit a maximum of a 1080p signal up to 60fps, and while the image quality is good, it is compressed. At a glance, you probably won't really notice the compression under normal circumstances, but if it's a darker and noisier image, you can start to spot some banding in the darker gradients as a result of that compressed signal. Now, feedback on this has been received by Hollyland, and they've notified me that they will be releasing software updates to improve on this. But for the most part, the Mars 400 is most probably going to be used for signal monitoring purposes, so the way I see it, it's kind of expected and is not too big of a deal given the application. And speaking of applications, there is an official app that can be used with the Mars 400 called Hollyview. It's available for both iOS and Android, and the way it works is it connects your device directly to the transmitter via Wi-Fi, and you do so by scanning a QR code printed on the transmitter using the app. You can then have up to four smart devices streaming simultaneously from the transmitter on top of the two hardware receivers that you can pair to it. Now the range is a bit shorter with the app, and there is a bit more delay on the app compared to the dedicated HDMI receiver, but point of the app is it's super practical and convenient. Say if you're on a film set, all you need is an iPad and you already have a director's monitor. And by the way, this system will transmit the audio that's embedded in the HDMI signal as well. Now the units also have built-in fans inside them for heat dissipation. Now the fan noise is not loud, but it's definitely audible. So if I turn this on, and I probably have to hold it just below the mic, but there you can probably hear the fan noise. It's a bit louder on the transmitter than on the receiver, which makes sense because the transmitter operates at a higher power, but you might just want to be a bit mindful of your transmitter's placement, especially if you know that you're going to be recording audio close to the camera. So to summarize, I find this to be a super useful system to invest in. There are just so many scenarios whereby it would be impossible to set up an off-camera monitor without one of these, especially if you have a camera that's going to be moving around a lot, or you have your camera on a gimbal and you have a focus puller who could use a focus monitor, or four times when you simply don't have a long enough HDMI cable. So as usual, if you're interested in having a closer look at these products, I'll leave some links below. And that sums up the review. If you enjoyed it, do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon for more videos just like this. And I will see you in the next video. But until then, here's another video of my YouTube things you should watch. Or if you don't like a computer telling you what to watch, here's one of my latest videos.